Hi, it's Lisa Jane here and welcome to Yummy Mummy Podcast. And today I'm with my Magic Barclay, who is a specialist in hydrotherapy and an emotional eating and chronic disease specialist. Now, Magic Barclay is a single mum with two uh, teenage boys who have autism spectrum disorder, which is also known as ASD. She has also lost 80 kilos since starting what she preaches now to others and she follows through with her clients these amazing techniques. She has a number one hack which is about cleaning from the inside out and today we're going to talk about it. So thank you so much Mad Magic for coming on to my podcast. Thanks for having me Lisa. And tell me all about this number one hack in losing weight by cleaning from the inside out. Okay, so the number one hack, it actually has a few different facets to it. The first is eliminating toxins. We live in a really toxic society. We take it in from our foods, from our surroundings, our furniture, our new clothes when we buy it. It's actually loaded with fungicides, um, which is why you don't buy mouldy clothes from Kmart. Um, and we also get it from driving around. So we get it every which way. And of course we get it from the very controversial vaccines. So we are toxic people. Okay. Um, so just going back a little bit, yep. if we wash our Kmart clothes, is that gonna help? Any clothes that you buy, um, I use soap nuts, which are a natural um, soapy nut. <laughs> basically as they're called and I wash every new piece of clothes that I buy for me and the kids and even dog blankets everything three times in cold water and then I hang it in the sun and if I can't hang it in the sun um, then I'll try and find you know a spot inside the house where sunshine's getting to it on a clothes horse and that should kill the fungicides off. Well that makes sense um, my mum had taught me always when we come home from buying clothes to wash them straight away and yep. however i'm feeling like these days we're not doing that we are just getting the clothes because we don't want to wash them because once we wash them we don't have that beautiful uh iron pressed uh feeling on it or it doesn't feel nice and fuzzy anymore especially for the first time when you want to wear it for a party like just imagine this is actually happening to our next generation they're not understanding um, too clean so okay and then the sun does kill off more um, yep. bacteria so when you open clothes or buy new clothes they've always got that wonderful fresh new scent that's fungicide yeah okay yeah so everyone make sure when you buy all your clothes you wash them first in soap nut i will put something up in the comments to show you where to find it um either at a store or online um the best the best thing and Lisa you can put in this in the comments there's a store on the on the internet called biome and they actually sell soap nuts um straws to replace pl plastic straws so we use bamboo and glass and stainless steel um pretty much everything healthy for the home you can find there oh beautiful thank you for that Good no worries all right so now that we've gone past making sure that <laughs> we know you understand now that there is fungicides and luck in the world yeah i didn't realize myself i thought it was just mainly foods i didn't understand about clothes that's fantastic um go on what's the next okay thing? so we're cleaning toxins out of our body we accumulate toxins and we even take them in through our skin which is our largest organ of our body is our skin our epidermis so as we're touching fruit and veg at the fruit and veg shop we're actually taking in pesticides we don't even have to ingest it just putting them in the bag in the shopping bag, you're actually getting it through your skin. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that food wise, so we can cover this in a number of ways. So food wise, we need to wash our fruit and veg in either um, organic apple cider vinegar, or as I've just read a study today in bicarb and cold water. So that will actually kill pesticides, herbicides, all sorts of waxes. And of course, let's not forget, everybody picks up an apple at the fruit store has a look at it and puts it back and picks up another one. So you're washing off their handprints too, whatever they've got on their hands. Okay, well, with the apple cider vinegar wash, um, that's um, one part of apple cider to three parts water. Yes, cold water. That's right, yep. And we soak it for about 15 minutes. Yep. What about the bicarb? What's the ratio for there? 
I'm not sure of the ratio, but I only just read the study this morning and they were saying it was more effective than apple cider. Um, I'm going to trial that this week. I'm actually going to the fruit and veg place today. So I'll be trialling that and I can put some comments up yeah, um, okay. after this podcast. Um, but yeah, the apple cider vinegar works well and you'll actually notice that the wax on apples, for example, breaks down and they'll look really white and cloudy on the outside. Mm -hmm. So what you do once you've let them dry a bit is you get some rough paper towel and just give them a really good rub with some dry paper towel. Okay, cool. That's great. I like yeah. that with the, with the bicarb though as well because I do have a lot of that product here. It's yep. in the bathroom, it's in the kitchen, it's even in my first aid kit. Yep. And, um, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be good to know. I'm going to study it as well. Yeah. And I'll get back to everyone and let you guys know because... Um, it can be a little bit time consuming sometimes with the apple cider vinegar um, and also expense. It can get expensive depending on what you're buying, but the bicarb might, might be a little bit cheaper. As long as it's aluminium free. And okay. so you've got to make sure that it's aluminium free bicarb. Okay, of course. Yep. Yes. And that's another, we'll have to touch on aluminium another day. Yes, <laughs> not now. <laughs> so we're talking about toxins. So we've looked at food, we've looked at new clothes. Now you've also got furniture. So furniture, um, the wood that a lot of furniture bases are made out of has formaldehyde in it. We take that in. So whether you're buying a new couch or a new desk or a new car, always air it out really well. If you can't go in without screwing your face up thinking you can smell something, then there's a problem. Like that, that's telling your body this is toxic. What about when you jump in the car when it's brand new and, you, and that beautiful new fresh smell. God, that makes me so sick. <laughs> um, so the best thing, if you're going to get a new car, well done. I wish I could. Uh, so what you do is you cut up lemons and, and make sure they're organic lemons. Cut them into quarters and slices. So have a mixture of different surface areas. Put them in a glass dish. Sit them in the car overnight. Put up some um, fly wire or um, just some gardening you know plastic sort of thing um i don't know what you mean fly. like shade cloth that's the word i was looking for oh, shade okay. cloth. Okay. and put that up so the spiders don't get in the car but the lemon can soak up all the plastic fume okay cool that's another yeah. little trick uh yeah what about when you go get your car cleaned because i had my car cleaned recently and i told them don't not let to them use them. chemicals i told them not to <laughs> And they tried their hardest, but in some little areas they did have to. I told them just to use hot water and, and they had to. And then when I jumped in the car, it, yeah, you could smell the chemicals from the spray. And because I'm so used to not having them, um, yep. I basically had to, yeah, have the windows open all the time and I had to run over water over it. And finally it has gone. But yep. when people are using chemicals and they're jumping in, they're breathing that in. All That's right. When the car's heating up now, it's becoming summer, you're going to be breathing that in even more so. That's mm -hmm. right. So here at home, my kids and I make all of our products ourselves, and that includes car wash, dish, dishwashing detergent, everything. Um, so on the odd occasion, my car gets to a car wash. Um, so I'm going somewhere important, and I don't want to look like I'm rocking up in Mar and Park Kettle's old beaten up truck. Yeah. Um, then I will actually take my own wash and ask my car wash people to use that. Oh, that's nice. So they do that. Yeah. Well, yeah, they do. Okay. So it's all about communication. Just ask. Yeah. Okay. Because I do know once before I had my car detailed and I said water only and they did yeah. a really good job. It took longer. Um, but, you know, for them to keep me coming back, it's important. And I think we need to be social. That's why I'm, I'm yeah. doing all this, to, to help people understand that there's no harm in asking if it's okay. And if it's not okay. Go they, somewhere else. Yeah. Go somewhere else and keep yeah. asking. Someone will come. Along yep. yes. Yeah. That's right. So we've discussed food, we've discussed clothes, cars, furniture. Now the other thing that brings toxicity into our lives is people. Mm. So you know when you get that gut feeling when you meet someone and you just think, I don't know if I'm gonna like this person, you're usually right. So I can be quite a, a harsh person when you first meet me. It's because through my mind and through my body and, and my gut. I'm feeling whether that person's going to be a healthy person in my life or not. And there are some people that I've met that are absolutely lovely, but I cannot give them the time of day because I go by my gut feeling and it's pretty much usually right. So when you've got that gut feeling, don't ignore it. What about reflections of people? Like if you meet someone and you, 
you don't like them because they are you and you don't want to address that within yourself. You'll feel that in your head, not in your gut. All right. So your gut, your gut feeling is one of those things like you're crossing a road and something tells you don't step into the road right now and then all of a sudden a bus comes hurtling through which you couldn't see on the horizon. Yeah. That's your gut protecting you. So it's your second brain that does most of the thinking, actually does more thinking than your actual brain does. So the gut can tell. Don't ever dismiss a gut feeling. Okay, so we need to cleanse the uh, toxic people out of our life by yeah. listening to our gut. All right, yeah. so how do we get out of our head? What if, what if we're so polluted by so much going on around us and it's really difficult for us to listen to our gut? Give it a 10-second rule. So here at home, we have a 10-second rule. If the kids want to tell me something, they have to think about it for 10 seconds. They have to think, is this going to be helpful, useful? Is she actually going to hear my message? Is there another way I need to say it? Is there something I can do to circumvent a huge drama about something that might be as simple as opening a packet of something in the cupboard? So we always have a 10 second rule. Think it through first, filter it through your body, filter it through your gut, sit with that thought before it comes out. Okay. All Same right. with meeting new people. 10 second rule, don't say a word to them, you say hello and then you just wait 10 seconds, filter it through your body and work out whether that's going to happen or not. Beautiful, it's a really good system. So we're just slowing ourselves down, slowing, yeah, slowing the whole process down. Yeah, we, we live in a fast paced society and it hasn't done us any favours at all. So we're getting sicker, we're getting fatter, we're getting so caught up in the day-to-day, the, -day, the, the work routine for people that have full-time work. It's not nine to five anymore, it's seven to seven. And they're coming home exhausted and then still thinking, oh, I've got to do stuff the next day. So we're working at such a fast pace that we're not giving ourselves that 10 seconds when you meet someone to work out, is this going to be a, a good fit for my life? Mm, yeah. All right, cool. So I'm feeling already like I'm feeling a <laughs> boxing. What's the next step now? Okay, so the next step is we've got all these toxins in us. What do we do with them? How do we get rid of them? Um, if we've got amalgams, so amalgam fillings, we need to get those removed. You need to remove them um, in a really healthy way. Yeah. I don't and know. So, I I've got one, but mine's white now. Is that, how do I know? The white ones are fine. Ah, oh, so if they're the silvery, metally ones, they're not good. Um, so there's a technique called the SMART technique. You need to make sure that you have that done and that you only have one amalgam removed at a time. So you need to leave about four weeks between each removal because the mercury load that releases into your body is very highly toxic. Okay. So if you go to a dentist and they say, I can take the whole lot out, and they're not wearing a mask and they're not putting a, a dental dam in your mouth and they're not using a vacuum to pull the mercury out straight away, then they're not doing it properly. Okay, so do your research first to make sure the yep. dentist uh, is really uh, holistic in his approach in, in making sure he's removing. But when he removes, is he replacing? He's replacing it with a safer alternative. Okay, yep. okay. all yep. right. What about metal plates? Because I had braces when I was really young and I still have my metal. You need to get it checked by a holistic dentist. Hopefully it's titanium, which has the least effect on the body. But if um, it is amalgam, if it's bonded with amalgam, so sometimes they bond them with a, an amalgam instead of a, a dental concrete, uh, mm -hmm. then, yeah, you've got mercury going into your system. So you okay. need to have that checked. All right, I'll have that yeah. checked. Um, yeah. Thinking, what about tongue rings and piercings? They're usually made of titanium or stainless steel, so they're fine. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So we've looked at um, toxic overload in the mouth. The next place it goes to is the gut. And this is really where losing weight, staying healthy, getting rid of illness, making sure that everything's right emotionally and physically in your body comes to being. And that's through colon hydrotherapy. Now, there's a lot of people out there that think, you know, I'm not going to stick a tube up my butt and have water pump up it and, like, that's just gross and that's stupid. Um, it's actually not. It's been happening for thousands of years. Oh, yeah. you know, the ancient Greeks, the ancient Egyptians, they all did colon hydrotherapy. Yeah. And we've kind of, you know, poo-pooed it and there's a lot of stuff on the internet going, that's just crazy, it's going to flush out your good bacteria. It actually doesn't. The good bacteria needs to be hydrated in your gut and in your colon. Um, and so it prefers this because it flushes out the bad bacteria and it promotes good bacteria. 
So what you'll find is waste is eliminated faster, more easily. And if you do it, say, once a month, you'll be taking out a lot of toxic load, both physically and emotionally. Okay. So I am going to tell everyone this. I've done it. I did it years and years and years ago. I did a proper program because there are lots of different programs and people say they'll have one or two, but I actually did it for a month and I was doing three treatments in a week. Um, and so I had, I had nine treatments actually and I did one extra and I noticed a huge result in just my all overall well-being with um, my behaviour. I was a lot more energetic and I was a lot more softer in, in just the way that I presented with people as well. And I lost a lot of weight. Not that I did it for weight loss. I did it for detoxing and yeah. I lost a lot. But I was on a really good eating plan. So that's the other thing too, Magic. You can't just go in and do all these treatments and still be eating the same kind of foods. No. So what's, what's the plan there? Okay, so you've taken care of your colon, you've looked at your house and everything and the people around you, flicked off a few superfluous people maybe, and you've got to look at what you're eating. <laughs> yeah, bye-bye. Um, like that though, it would be heartbreaking because you're so, you, you've attracted them into your life. You're yep. so, uh, it, um, you're so um, uh, addicted in a way because your body... Yeah wants them because it makes you feel good at the time but you know they're not good for you so yes you are going to go through the goodbye my lover goodbye my friend <laughs> it's going to be a hard time because they're going to resist they're not going to probably want it to happen either and you're going to be going back and forth back and forth back and forth so um yeah it is going to be a little bit hard but when you it do is, but to move you've got to toughen up and, and you've got to do it yeah you know, oh, freeing that's, that's right. like colon irrigation on its own yeah, pretty much. Releasing <laughs> those toxic friends out of your life. Oh. So if you do a colon irrigation and get rid of toxic friends all on the same day, you're really winning. Wow. <laughs> so, and then go eat some fruit. Okay, so we're talking about food. So there's so much fear of fruit out in the world. Fruit is such a complete food. It's the only food that comes in its own wrapper. It, you know, you don't need to put it in a bag. It's fine it grows on the tree it doesn't have to be organic although if you can afford it great a tree is still going to grow an apple or a banana or a lemon or whatever or a tomato and it's going to be a perfect entity a perfect being so fruit is a healer of all bodies and being allergic to fructose you're actually allergic to high fructose corn syrup not fructose itself so fructose it comes from fruit and veggies is actually a natural form of glucose that the body needs to work. And we need glucose. If we don't take in glucose, we die. Simple as that. You know, you, I was just about to say, what about people that say that I can't have fructose? And I, I wonder about that because our body's designed for fruit and vegetables. That's what, yep. when, that's what grows naturally. Um, yep. so, and I love what you just said, and that makes so much sense now. So people just have to work out which what to be eating and not not just going okay that's it i'm going to eliminate all my fruits now out of my life yeah, yeah. and then go and eat a substitute which is man-made in the lab exactly so mm -hmm. doctors are on this kick about fructose being bad fructose isn't bad glucose can be bad if it's a man-made glucose mm high -hmm. fructose corn syrup which is in all packaged foods is bad for you because we can't break it down and it's quite toxic and then you've got lots of other things like sucrose which comes from cane sugar and that's what you put in your tea and coffee that's bad for you okay. but putting a drop of agave syrup in your tea that's good for you that's good fructose so don't go absolutely nuts people don't be like oh now i'm just going to put agave into everything now and bathe in it and yeah no 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 there's a moderation <laughs> moderation exactly but if you're eating a banana a day or some grapes, you're getting that natural fructose and that's the sweetness that you will need. So if you've got a, a sweet craving, um, then yeah, have some grapes. They're in season right now. Mangoes, I can't get enough mangoes at the moment. They're just fantastic this time of year. If you've got a salt craving like I do, I actually suck on a little piece of Himalayan sea salt under my tongue as soon as I feel that craving. And that stops me going to the shop and buying some potato chips, which used to be what I did because I've always had a salt craving. Yeah. 
So the reason the body will crave salt is your muscles need it. So same as we need glucose for life, we also need some salt. So salt is also not a bad guy. Mm -hmm. So when someone says you can't have fruit and you can't have salt, you don't need that person around because they have no idea because you actually do need both fruit and salt. Okay. So that's a start. I like that. Meat, if you're going to eat meat, I don't eat meat, but if you're going to eat meat, make sure it's from a local producer, an organic producer, and ask them some questions. What do your cows eat? Now, if the cows eat grass, worry. Everyone says grass fed is great. Grass is looked after by the use of glyphosate, which is Roundup. Now, that gets into waterways. The cows eat the grass, which has been treated with Roundup, so there's no nasty weeds in it. That's great, but guess what? The cow's then killed. The meat is then put on a shelf for you to buy and you cannot break down a glyphosate. So it sits inside your liver and your kidneys and can kill you. So if you're going to eat meat, eat the right meat, ask lots of questions. Lots of questions. What about when you hear grain-fed? Grain-fed, again, I really am not a fan of. Um, grain-fed... Um, can cause all the gluten intolerances. And people say, oh, but, you know, how does that happen? Grain is actually treated with Roundup. Again, you come back to the glyphosate. So you've really got to be careful what you use. Now, my boys still eat meat, but they don't eat meat very often. They will eat organic chicken, and that's usually from a supplier that I know. Sometimes they will have um, beef, but not very often. What I do allow them to have is goat. Oh. And the reason they can have goat is goats eat anything. So goats will eat weeds. Goat will, goats will eat flowers and plants. They don't just nibble on grass. In fact, they don't like grass. So they go for things with bigger root systems, different leaf systems, leaf structures that don't take up things like glyphosate as much. Well, goat is lamb, right? Goat is lamb, same thing. No, lamb is sheep. Lamb is sheep. Goat is yeah. goat. Goat, goat is, is goat. goat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was brought up with lamb my whole life. Now I'm changing over to goat. Well, recently with all my research um, with the cancer that was yeah. um, knocking on my, my door indirectly, but from somebody else, we were told out of all the meats to um, focus on goat and lamb. They were the, the two that yeah. we were told to look into. And yeah. so since then, at home, my home, lamb's easy for me. I was brought up with it, so it's easy. Goat has a different kind of taste and texture, and it, it works differently. But in casseroles, absolutely amazing. Mm. Um, so should is it okay just to buy goat anywhere, or should we be going to the organic stores? I would be going to a farmer's market for any meat that you buy. Go to a farmer's market. They're only too happy to answer all your questions. Okay. I'll be honest. They're not just trying to make a sale. They're there because they're passionate about their produce. Okay. So, oh, yeah. That's on the list, people. Go to farmer's markets. Yep, farmer's markets. I'm off there this week. <laughs> so we've covered that. Now, we've, the next thing we need to look at with toxins is we've oh, kind of discussed gluten, but here's the big one, dairy. Now, oh, if you have okay. any, say, yeah. Yeah, any chronic disease, you cannot have dairy. I don't care if it's diabetes, if it's thyroid disease, Hashimoto's, hypothyroid, chronic fatigue, MS, whatever, don't have dairy. Simple as that. You're not a baby cow. It's, apart from being horrifically cruel in the dairy industry, only baby cows can drink cow milk. Yeah. We mentioned goats before. If you need to have milk, have goat's milk. Make sure it's organic um, and actually coals stocking a really good one at the moment okay. so there you go it doesn't have to be expensive oh, um, but goat milk is actually the closest what I'll was that Woolworths I'll have to check out Woolies because I do Woolies yep. yeah yeah um, Woolworths have it too yeah uh -huh. yep um, so goat milk is actually the closest in composition to human milk so it's the closest to breast milk that we can get and um, actually at the zoos they give some of the baby primates goat milk oh okay so yeah, so we can actually take in goat's milk, but we can't take in dairy. What about cow? And the reason? What was that? 
Camel milk. Camel milk. Um, now, camel milk is a little bit like dairy. So the reason we have problems with dairy um, with chronic disease is that it has fats and sugars all in one. So it has the fat of the milk, plus it has the lactose, which is the sugar, the glucose of the milk. And our bodies cannot cope with fats and sugars together. Okay. So that's why dairy doesn't work. Also, um, a dairy milk is actually uh, alkaline when it's sitting out, if you test it, but once you drink it, it turns acid. It's acid. Yeah, yeah. Which is why a lot of people get IBS, irritable bowel, or reflux or something after they've had milk. So, yeah, it causes your body to go very acidic and it will give you a very upset tummy. And then if you do some colon hydrotherapy, you'll be feeling a bit of discomfort as it gets through the large intestine because it's pulling all of that toxicity out. I remember those times. And people have said to me, how do you do it? Because the first session, like, they're not feeling anything because they've got so much in there. Yeah. And they're like, oh, it was brilliant and fine. I'm like, go to the second and the third. I did, the, I did 10 treatments. Yeah. And so, yeah, you're right. Once I got to my third one, I was like, oh, my God, sweating and getting hot. Yeah. 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 And, then just, and I had oils to, to, to um, turn my, my stomach to help it, hot water bottles. And I had yeah. a person help me was lovely. Like, really, the, like you have your button to press to yeah. meet somebody. So don't be scared of it, people. That's actually doing good for you. You cannot have pleasure without pain. If you want to live a vital life and you haven't been... True. You, you have to get through that. You've got to get You have through. to start somewhere. Yeah. So Usain Bolt didn't just decide one day that he was going to be the fastest man in the world. He practiced. That's the right. same as you can't decide tomorrow I'm going to be really healthy and get rid of all my disease. You actually have to work up to it. So you have to take small steps. And we've covered a lot of those in our little chat today. Yeah. If in doubt about what you're putting in your mouth, read the label. Now, here's the next big thing. In Australia, we are the only Western nation not to have mandatory labelling of palm oil. Now, you want to know what palm oil is? It's actually an ingredient that in order to make it, 100 size MCG fields a day are being destroyed of rainforest. So picture the MCG, pretty big place. 100 of those has been cleared of natural rainforest through Southeast Asia. So a lot of animals are dying, losing their homes, all for palm oil. Mm. Now, you're probably thinking, well, you know, it's progress, the way life goes. To harvest palm oil, what they're actually doing is they're planting the palm trees, harvesting the, the kernels to get the oil, and then burning it down to the ground. Mm. So nothing else can grow there for the next five years because it's been burnt down to the ground, much like a bushfire. Nothing regenerates for quite a few years. Yeah. So they're not just harvesting and then regrowing and cultivating in a sustainable way. What they're doing is they're going, oh, well, we need now 100 more MCG size areas because we've just burnt that one down to the ground. Yeah. Now, palm oil is in pretty much everything that's got packaging mm -hmm. around it. And in Australia, it can be labelled as one of 58 different things, known things. The most common that you'll see on a packet is vegetable oil emulsifier or, or vegetable gum yeah or vegetable extract in mm -hmm. fact that's another one sometimes on labels it will say palm oil if it doesn't say certified sustainable palm oil it's still bad palm oil mm -hmm. just because they labeled it doesn't mean it's good so what we need to do is really look at things that don't have oils like that unless it says something like almond oil um, if it says soy or soy lecithin, stay away. That's genetically modified as well. If it says safflower, it's usually fine. If it's um, which flowers? sunflower, safflower is okay. Uh, but if it's sunflower or canola, again, stay away. If you've got chronic disease or you're trying to lose weight, you don't want to be taking in canola either. Um, but definitely read your labels and look at it. In November, oh, we're in November now, in a few weeks. <laughs> Yeah, um, in a few weeks, there's actually a nationwide vote to um, demand the mandatory labelling of palm oil so that you and I can read our labels and everyone out there can read our labels and make a choice whether we take this thing into our bodies or not. Um, and it's actually been put off three or four times this vote already, and Victoria is the only state to have committed to mandatory labelling palm oil 
once this vote goes ahead. So for everyone around Australia or anywhere else in the world watching this, write to your local members and say you want the choice to know if palm oil is in your products or not. You might be thinking, okay, you know, it's yet to shame about the orangutans and tigers and um, rhinos and elephants losing their homes. What a shame, but that's not part of my life. So why should I care? Yeah. Let me put it to you like this. Palm oil is in paint, so household paint. It's in products that you put in your car, like oils that you put in your car and car wash and things like that. It's also in the foods that you are feeding your children and yourself. How can a product that can be in so many different things be good for you? Mm. It's not. If we were meant to be eating palm oil, it would be in our piece of fruit that we take off the tree. It's not. Yeah. So remember I said fruit is in its own packaging. It's a whole complex organism that's ready for us to eat and bioavailable to us. Palm oil is not. It is not natural for humans to be taking it in. And in fact, animals won't eat it. So there you go. Wow. So that's probably, you know, it covers a wide range. Um, and top tips. Uh, uh, fish and crustaceans. Okay, fish and crustaceans. I wouldn't eat it. You couldn't pay me to eat it. Oh, um, very high in mercury. Okay. Um, our oceans, our sewage goes out into our oceans. And not to mention, oceans aren't separated by a barrier. They all mix with each other. So when there's, you know, something going on in Japan, like, you know, happened with the tsunami when the um, nuclear power plant got washed out, that goes into the oceans. So fish are eating and taking in all of this pollution and crap, literally, <laughs> and radiation. And then you're going and eating some shellfish or some tuna. Not a good idea. Really not a good idea. I'm going to have to look into that one because yeah. you know, I really do like my essential fatty acids. and I do. So if you're going to eat fish, you need to make sure it's a river fish and that it's wild, not farmed. Yes. So there are ways you can get around it. Again, you don't want it farmed because it's being fed pellets and things like that have got glyphosate and lots of toxins in them. Um, so you want it wild, um, so like a river salmon or a river trout, that's, well, I wouldn't say it's fine, um, but that's better option than other things. But that's not your what you recommend. So this is what, you know, your... your yeah, so what I recommend for your EPA and DHA is seaweed. Seaweed can be farmed without the toxins. And seaweed is a plant, so it grows. It really doesn't need a lot to make it grow and grow healthy. Um, I, take, I can't eat seaweed, so I take a kelp capsule a day. So I get my EPA and DHA from that. Okay. All right. Well, there's always ways around it. And there's if, ways around, yeah. yeah. If people are wondering, please question and ask us because uh, we've got magic that's going to help us uh, clarify what it is. Um, if we're if yeah. it's a fish that you love to eat, ask your... Uh, fishmonger, just like you would ask your butcher, go to the to the local markets and go to your um, fishmonger and ask him, and he'll be able to help you to let you know if it's being farmed or if it's wild. Yep. Definitely local markets, farmers markets, get out there. It's a good day out. These are small producers that really care about their product, that are you know there Sunday after Sunday peddling their wares because they believe in it. They're not a big multinational corporation just trying to sell you something that's laden with mercury or poisons. Mm. These people actually care about what they're giving you. And yes, you might pay a little bit extra, but you'll have a really fun day doing it. And they're there to answer your questions. Yeah, they become your friends. I know a yeah. lot of them, they, when I see them every week at the market I go to, and um, when I don't go, they remember, where have you been? Yeah. So it's really lovely. It's a good feeling to feel... Uh, Missed, actually. Yeah, it makes you yep. feel... And that probably takes me to the last point, community. Okay. So we've become so isolated. We don't live in a village like we used to. Um, you know, you look at places like Samoa, they still live with that village atmosphere where, you know, mum doesn't does look after the babies. The whole community does. And they're very, very healthy. So what we've lost is that sense of community. At a farmer's market, what you get back 
is a sense of community because mm -hmm. they do know your name. And even though 200 people might be at the market that day, if you're not there next month, they'll remember. Mm -hmm. And when they see you again, they'll ask you if you're okay. And that's what we miss. And we're so busy going to work and looking after the kids and, you know, doing all the things that we have to do every day. It's like a, a checklist, you know, check them all off. And we just don't think, I'm not around the people that I care about and people that understand me. So, you know, add community in there. Yeah, that's great. Excellent. I love these like little um, steps. I am really impressed um, with today because I didn't think you're going to take us on this massive journey. And it's absolutely <laughs> to know that it, it is a holistic approach. You're cleaning from the inside out. Um, you start. You're starting with the outside, which is probably easier to do to start with. Yep. And we start working on the inside. So yep. you'll have to um, shout out your business name and details and, and how people can contact you, Magic. Okay. So on Facebook, you can find me under Magic Barclay Weight Loss Community Forum. It is going through a revamp at the moment. Um, you can find me on Twitter, Magic Barclay, Instagram, Magic Barclay, or you can find me at magicbarclay.com on the internet um, and soon on iTunes you'll be able to find a magical life health wealth and weight loss which will be my podcast oh I can't wait for that I can't yeah. wait you have to have me on as a guest I uh, will <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it people I uh, hope you enjoyed it please comment share this along to all your family and friends maybe you can share this to um, you know that toxic person that you want to get rid of this could be <laughs> They might get rid of you first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Magic, thank you again. I appreciate you being here. And don't forget, everyone, stay delicious. Mwah. See Bye. You. <laughs>